Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. Today's date is December 2nd, 2021. In this video, we're going to do some commentary on a David Pakman show clip concerning Fidel Castro. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe and consider supporting on Patreon at patreon.com slash socialism for all. So let's fire up the clip. I haven't watched this before. A viewer sent it in and apparently it's an irate caller defending Fidel Castro to Pacman, who is just such a liberal douchebag. He's one of the people out of the whole Suck Dem gang, Secular Talk, all those people, who I love to hate the most. I think he's one of the most right-wing out of all of them. I think the last time he didn't even support Bernie. He supported, like, Warren, I think. So, yeah, this should be interesting. It's a short clip, and I just did, like, four Castro audiobooks, so it's on my mind. Here we go. Listen, um, today's voicemail kind of bums me out. Um, it's about Cuba and we talk sometimes about the revolutionary left. It's a sort of pseudo populism on the left, which sometimes blinds people to authoritarianism and the lack of progressivism in authoritarianism, where they end up supporting uh, these, um, you know, often military uniform wearing faux populists. Let's just pause right there. So. Cuba. We ran down the history of this in the Castro history will absolve me audiobook. Let's just do it again real quick. So like many other places in the Americas, Cuba was inhabited by indigenous people prior to about 1500, you know, 1492 sailed the ocean blue and all that. And then it was colonized by Spain. So then from 1500, up through about 1900, 1898 specifically, it was ruled by Spain as a colony. Uh, there was a brief period when the British in 1762 to 63 took control of it, but then they traded it to Spain for Florida and went back under Spanish control. But then 1868 to 1898, there was a struggle for independence. Finally, the Spanish-American War, 1898, Spain gives up. Cuba is ruled by the U.S. military for about four years. And then in 1902, Cuba becomes formally independent. However, in 1933-34, there is basically like a right-wing coup. Uh, Batista and his people come to power, and Batista becomes president at one point. For a while, he was just head of the armed forces. Uh, these were dark times for Cuba. And then in 1952, Batista runs for president again. And it's looking like he's going to lose the election. So they have a coup and they call off the election. The next year, 1953, Castro and his movement which you can read all about or hear all about if you check out the History Will Absolve Me audiobook posted recently. They basically stand up for their country and they're like, no, no, no. We just recently got independence from Spain and we suffered through your right-wing bullshit and you're not going to do it again. And then in 1959, that movement was successful, basically after a struggle between 53 and and 59. So that's the background. So what is Pacman's complaint exactly? That Castro wore a military uniform? I mean, <laughs> Castro's deal was, you know, he led an island of six million people. He and his band of people, they led an island of six million people, which had been a colony forever. And then even after gaining formal independence was still being used by the U.S., you know, Pacman's country, the U.S., and then they became really independent, and in a very vocal way, and then they became a shining example. It was a very internationalist revolution, the Cuban Revolution. They pointedly wanted to be an example for development and growth throughout Latin America, and, uh, you know, immediately in the first year started giving speeches at the U.N., about the underdevelopment, the illiteracy, the lack of access to clean drinking water throughout Latin America, and that the Organization of American States was dominated by the U.S., which, you know, had 2% of its people 
that didn't have access to clean drinking water or three percent of its people who were illiterate whereas some of these other countries had 68 80 percent of people falling into that kind of extreme poverty and underdevelopment and uh just a, a brutal live you know living conditions brutal life so um you know you want to talk about progressive um you don't have a leg to stand on cuba <laughs> achieved a higher life expectancy than pacman's country the united states despite brutal sanctions they've been doing everything that they can and they've been doing fantastically uh can we imagine where cuba would be without the blockade by the u.s pacman's country so does he have anything to say about that or just that castro wore military clothing i mean that's was his background he led a guerrilla insurgency which was supported by everybody in cuba I mean, it had overwhelming popular support and still does to this day. Let's continue with the clip. And I've been talking this week about how the U.S. has some blame for the situation in Cuba, thanks to the hypocritical and counterproductive U.S. embargo of Cuba. I want the embargo to be dropped. I don't want American involvement in Cuban politics. And yet I cannot as a progressive support something as authoritarian as the Castro regime, which came to power in 1959, handed power from brother to brother in 2008. That's not progressive. That's just not progressive. And sadly, I did get a voicemail. It's very long. I'll only play some of it from a revolutionary leftist who doesn't like my perspective. Take a listen. OK, so really, we have absolutely nothing but the empty phrases of authoritarian. Really, I think that's about it. Uh, and that's the same thing that Pacman says about Venezuela, too. It's, quote, authoritarian. And the closest we've gotten to an actual criticism is that Castro, Raul Castro, came to power after Fidel Castro. Nothing about anything else, just it is in some way authoritarian, and he can't support that. You've got nothing there. I mean, what substantively are they doing or not doing that you're going to criticize make a criticism or shut the fuck up like you have nothing these are just empty phrases as far as this whole thing about you know revolutionary leftists first of all it's called socialism david use the word um you know being pseudo populist I can't think of anything actually more pseudo populist than, I don't know, supporting Elizabeth Warren. Like, what does this mean? It's infuriating. It's an easy thing to throw around, but when it comes down to it, what is your criticism? Crickets. Let maybe the caller will make more sense. David, I'm really disappointed in you, the way you're framing Cuba politically. You are purposefully leaving out the full context. Fidel Castro did not start out as a dictator, nor a dictator wannabe. So first of all, didn't start out as a dictator, conceding that that's eventually what he became. OK, no. So that's a caller with poor phrasing who maybe isn't used to public speaking. You still, David, haven't made the case for anything. You can say it's authoritarian. I mean, you say the same fucking thing about Venezuela and you got nothing there either. Make the case. Don't just be like, oh, my caller isn't used to speaking on air and fell into my trap of framing. Ha ha, I win. No, make the case for something. He was a reaction to the Batista regime, mm -hmm. friendly to the United States corporate industrial oligarchy. Sure. The people in Cuba uprose because they were sick and tired of being paid lousy wages. Sure. They didn't want to be serfs for the American industrial machine. OK, Fidel Castro, I believe he was educated in the United States. And so he had a little, little bit one up on his fellow Cubans and he made sure that they understood the true nature of what was going on. Listen, this is how faux populist authoritarians work. The fact that Castro came to power 
in a context where there was genuine, real in the streets dissatisfaction with Cuban leadership doesn't change the fact that this is how faux populism works. It's the populist rhetoric. And next thing you know, the same guys in power for 49 years with a police state with complete and total control over every aspect of the people and, and of the economy. The fact that Castro replaced something bad and that those who were protesting in the 50s in Cuba did so genuinely and for good reasons doesn't mean that we praise Fidel Castro in power since 1959 until 2008, at which point he hands power to his brother. It's not progressive. I can't support it. And this is, you know, it's a very similar playbook to Venezuela because in the 50s there were reasons to protest, doesn't mean we now don't criticize what is an authoritarian regime. Uh, even the military uniforms similar between, you know, the, the Castro green uniform and Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela appearing sometimes in, in you know, mil, essentially military dress uniforms. And it's sort of disturbing to me that supposed progressives not only fall for the faux populist rhetoric, but they even fall for like the, the even the military uniform stuff doesn't raise alarms to you. The suspicion that these folks have of the military uniform when it's the US or the UK military. Yes, because those things aren't the same at all. When you lead a small island, which has been a colony for centuries against the biggest, most well, Castro described the US as a young, brash imperialism led by men with fangs. That is true. He contrasted it with the uh, older, more mature and refined colonialism and imperialism of the UK, for example. I mean, in one of the speeches that I just did an audiobook of, there were bombs going off while Castro is giving the speech and he's like, ha ha, another imperialist bomb, like let them try. And the crowd goes crazy because they know they're up against a vicious empire, which tried to murder Castro dozens of times. Are you in support of that Pacman because he wears a military uniform? You have absolutely nothing. There's nothing there. And it's a source of pride to people who stand up to an empire. And tell me, you know, you want to throw around terms like authoritarian and police state, and he was in power for a long time. Well, what did he do? Name something. Something, anything, anything at all. What did Castro do that you want to criticize and give some evidence for it? I mean, you know, you're here ranting about how long he was in power. It shouldn't be too hard to come up with a few examples that we could discuss. So, nothing. We got, he wore a military uniform, which Yes, in national liberation struggles against empire. You know, David Pakman lives in an imperialist country. He lives in the imperialist country right now, the center of it all, the one that is causing the most violence around the world. And he wants to compare the military of that country to Cuba, a small island which fought off empire just so that they could grow up, mature, and develop, so that they could live dignified lives and build schools, and build roads, and give people running water, and so on. And, and not be soaked by the power companies and everything else that was totally fucking over the Cuban people. A national liberation struggle is not the same as imperialist aggression. And it's funny because Castro mentions this in like his very first speech. He talks about how the imperialist press was lying about the way that even they conducted the uprising and how uh, because the imperialist countries and their puppets are always just doing, you know, wanton bloodshed whenever they need to use some suppressive violence. Um, they ran fake news, false headlines uh, about, you know, uh, Batista supporters attacked. Not that this was, you know, a national liberation struggle where they were throwing off decades of right wing, totally violent and oppressive rule, which Castro and Cuban socialism was not. Now, Pacman wants you to think it's all the same thing. 
And that's literally what imperialist stooges ha- like Pac-Man here have been doing since day one. Go back to the early speech. Castro talks all about it. So don't be fooled by this. This guy gets up there. Oh, he wears a military uniform. Be afraid. Authoritarian police state. You live in the fucking United States, you fucking tool. You want to talk about police states. You want to talk about militarism. Remove the beam from thine own eye. And maybe you'll see Cuba doesn't have this problem. You do. And you're projecting it onto countries that have forcibly escaped from your country's exploitation. Yes. Where did Batista go between his initial reign and then the failed 1952 presidential attempt? Florida. Yes. That's how it works. This is what the U.S. does. I don't know how you can possibly deny that at this point, particularly within the Americas. I mean, just the Monroe Doctrine alone. The U.S. declared, like, this is all ours. We're going to do whatever we want with it. This whole hemisphere, this is, you know, ours. Loosely or directly, it's all ours. And yet, your problem is with the people who stood up against that. So you want to say that there's some kind of hypocrisy going on, fucking point it out. But while you're just sitting there lobbing loosely or unsupported buzzwords like authoritarian, no one's going to take this seriously. No one who knows anything. And, I mean, where does this guy's money come from to stay on the air? My guess is just, you know, this is the next generation of imperialist news. It's probably funded by the exact same people. They're just trying to keep up their influence in the new media sphere. But it's the same old shit. It's the same old song and dance. It's the same old story. And, you know, you think about the kind of people, uh, kids mostly, I think, who these lies are going to go over with. And it's just so fucking cynical. It's so cynical of this douche to get on the air and... Again, who's going to be swayed by this? It's just, it's, it's sad. They have to go over people who are really naive and innocent. And they're like, oh yeah, well I don't like militarism because of what I associate that with, you know, the U.S. Like, you know, they know imperialist violence. Well, okay, Cuba must be doing that. Or, you know, I see the way that the U.S. police brutalize my community. Cuba must be doing that because he, you know, said that it's also a police state. Well, no, people, Pac-Man is lying to you as he lies about every situation like this. So what does he want? You know, what's his solution? The progressive Democratic Party? I mean, the progressive faction of the Democratic Party? He thinks that that's going to be the solution. Well, I got news for you. Look back through U.S. history. There have been progressive factions in the Democratic Party since... I mean, you know, the realignment that we know today uh, and, and even before that. And it's really never been internationalist because the U.S. needs to be the bulwark of empire. It needs to be that bully for capitalism. That's its function. Without it, the lifestyle, you know, the stock markets would collapse if the U.S. stopped pushing around the developed countries and manipulating them with debt traps and puppet governments and just naked military force and the lifestyle of people like David Pakman would collapse and we'd have to have an actual conversation about cooperatively developing the world rather than having some places up atop a mountain of stolen resources like the United States and the rest of the world slaving away to keep building that mountain higher. That's what Pac-Man at the end of the day is stumping for here. And it's evidence-free. What has he said other than, look at him, he's wearing a military uniform. Yeah, that military uniform is a symbol, it's emblematic of the struggle against all odds that the Cuban people put up to get empire off their fucking island. It seems to go out the window when you see the same sort of stuff being done in Cuba and in Venezuela. I will never get it. And again, I've at this point, I've done this so many times when I do these political uh, uh, compass type tests, 
I am not an authoritarian leftist. So that's pretty sad. Um, first of all, I think that Pacman will never get it because he's being paid not to get it. But also, you have a serious, quote unquote, political commentator, ostensibly, referencing the political compass quiz. Give me a fucking break. So that, <laughs> the world's smallest political quiz, this was invented, you know, the thing we've seen, it's got left and right, and then authoritarian and libertarian on the vertical axis. Um, this was invented by David Nolan. He was with the Libertarian Party of the United States, far right-wing party, and they were trying to promote the concept of libertarianism. That's where the entire thing comes out of. It has no basis in reality. It's just something that they came up with to sort of idealistically try to divorce authoritarianism and libertarianism from class struggle, which is more the left-right axis. So the entire thing is bunk. It's, it's a totally bullshit concept. It's literally right-wing propaganda that was developed in the late 60s and then used in the early 70s and on to promote the Libertarian Party. That was its function. The whole thing is meant to undermine the concept that if you don't have economic rights, you really don't have much in the way of anything else. So Pacman, you know, par for the course, just using right wing talking points. And then, you know, this concept, uh, this is basically just a right wing show playing at, quote, progressivism within such an extremely limited range that, you know, anybody to his left is just authoritarian and we won't even discuss particulars. There's about 10 seconds left of this clip. This is it. I mean, at this point, this is basically everything that he's going to say on the subject. Let's finish it. I'm a small a libertarian leftist, so I can't as a progressive support authoritarian regimes. And it makes me sad when when people who sometimes think of themselves as progressive support that it's just disappointing. Oh, he's sad. Oh, that's disappointing. Oh, his progressive quote friends in the audience have let him down. Oh, let's have a moment of silence for Pacman's sadness while he slanders the liberation struggle of an entire nation. Why not? Actually, two, because he threw in Venezuela in this clip. Evidence free. There was nothing there. Nothing. Just some empty bourgeois media buzzwords about authoritarianism coming from a wealthy guy who lives in the Imperial Corps, benefits from it daily, and not only doesn't question that, but actively goes to bat for the Imperialist Corps. He even mentioned in this clip the U.S. and U.K. military. Well, what are you going to say about that? Are you against what they do? No, of course you're not. But like I said, this is par for the course and as long as imperialism exists, as long as they have pen and paper to write, as long as they have a microphone, this is the kind of slander and lies. It's total misinformation that they are going to put out so that they can keep trying to get a leg up on exploiting people and trying to enlist the support of the working people of their countries against the other countries of working people who they're trying to exploit. We need to stop falling for this and really just take down mouthpieces like David Pakman. This guy should not have an ounce of credibility anymore whatsoever. Drive him off the air, seriously. All right. What do you think? Leave a comment. We'll continue the discussion below. In the meantime, thanks for listening. Thanks to the current patrons whose names are on the screen. If you'd like to get your name on the screen, head to patreon.com slash socialism for all. You can sign up for as little as $2 a month. I appreciate that support. I am not independently wealthy, and uh, it's very encouraging, and it's also materially helpful. So thank you. If you'd like to help out without making a donation, click like, subscribe, notifications bell. Leave a comment, even if it's just thanks or good video. That helps to boost the video in the algorithm and gets more people to see this channel and this clip. Also, sharing on your social media is very helpful, particularly if you're on Facebook. Uh, I have no Facebook presence right now. Got kicked off three times and said that was probably at least one time too many and not doing that for the foreseeable future. Uh, ultimately, whatever you do, 
to help the cause of socialism, whether it has anything to do with S4A or not. Thanks for doing it. Join an organization if there's a good one in your area, or at least maybe contribute some resources, or start a project of your own if you have the comrades, resources, and ideas for one. And we'll catch you in the next video.